All right, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate the guys showing up, our panelists. I appreciate our moderators showing up. Um, we're excited to have you guys here to do a couple of things, to celebrate fatherhood, to kick off our monthly event, our special event for real. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit about what real is just really quick at the beginning, turn it over to Kai. He's going to handle the evening and it's going to be a fantastic one. We have some powerful fathers on here, fatherhood panel, and we are super pumped for that. So if this is your first time attending a real event, let me just tell you really, really quick uh, what you're in for and why we're excited that you are here. First and foremost, real is recommit every day you live. So if you are making a choice, if you're at a place in your life where you're making a choice to show up, no matter where you're at, wanting to improve on things, wanting to improve on maybe generational habits of the past, anything, right? Any of the five peaks that we focus on, this is your spot. We do an event once a month on the third Thursday, and this is it. This is our special event this month, and we're focusing on fatherhood. Um, real is about brotherhood. We started to bring men, bring brothers, who can help hold each other accountable to what it is that we're working on, working through, and up leveling towards. So I'm glad that you guys are here. Uh, I'm blessed to know each and every one of you, and I'm excited to hear more from you this evening and continue to grow and learn because we all have value, we all have something to share, and it's so special when we get to do that together and show up. So I appreciate you guys taking time out of your lives, your families, to do just that. Um, Real is, is something that Justin, Kai, uh, John Chase, and I, we, we've kicked off and we've tried to uh, bring this to the world, but it's something that doesn't happen and doesn't continue without all of you. It is a place for men for two purposes, for men that are coming in that are at maybe a pivotal or transition point that wants support or people that have gone through some things that want to show up maybe as a mentor for other men. So we kind of get men from both sides of the spectrum and it is awesome to have this collaboration effort uh, of men, this safe space that we can grow and learn and develop together. So guys, thank you for being here. Um, man, that brings me a lot of joy to introduce our moderator this evening that is going to be handling the details and rocking the event in this men's panel. Mr. Kai Nix, he is internationally famous and you guys are gonna love having him just run this whole session. So Kai, as a father, um, as a husband, the way that you show up in the world, uh, blessed to know you, man, and thank you for being here and thank you for just, yeah, doing what you do. So I'll let you take it away, have fun. Absolutely. Thank you, Brother John. What an incredible topic to talk about because it is Father's Day week. This is our show on Sunday. We finally get a day. All the work that we put in, all the things that don't get recognized by us fathers, this is our day this Sunday. So I kind of consider this Father's Day week. This is all about us. It's so funny, though, you know, when it's Mother's Day, it's like this incredible hoopla, you know, your kids, they go out and buy $15 Mother's Day cards. But when it's Father's Day, they like pick the $1.99 card and be like, okay, dad, that's good enough for dad. A $1.99, he'll get that. I'll get mom a $15 card. But that's what we do. You know, we're here. This is the perfect shirt for us. I'm so proud to be here with you guys, with all you guys, because we're all heroes. We're all protectors. We're all visionaries. We're all leaders. And we're all oilers on this call. And I know we have a lot of oilers that are watching. So the perfect shirt for this call. Incredible, incredible panel. I'm so excited for this panel. John Chase, brother John is here. Leland Jones, the funny man. He doesn't think he's funny, but this dude is hilarious. But he's gonna tell you about his father's stuff. Um, and Justin Harrison, always a pleasure to have that guy with his army of kids on the call. And that's going to be beautiful to hear, just to hear Justin talk about. If he talks about each kid, we might hear, be here for about three hours. So don't go into each kid, Justin. And Creighton Barry, who's not on the call, but Creighton is this late for life. So he will be here. He's just late, um, but he's doing his fatherly duties and he'll talk about why he's late. But myself, I'm a single dad. I raised my daughter on my own. I was a single dad raising a kid, a girl in New York by myself. 
Mm. So that was a challenge in itself. But this is what we do. We rise, we step up to the challenges. Um, unfortunately, her and her mother, her mother and I didn't work out. It was that's the way life was meant for it to be. And I became a single dad and I took over the role when my daughter was at a very, very early age. And I did it on my own, but I was blessed that I had the graces of having my mother as support during her growth period. Um, I could tell you guys one little, before we get into the pen, I'll tell you this one quick little story. And this is about being the dad. You know, I'm like working like crazy. I'm running a gym, one of the most popular gyms in New York City. And I tell my mother, I need a break. I need a four day getaway. I need a break from seeing my daughter's face, everybody's face in New York. So I'm gonna go to Florida. I'm taking a trip, I'm going to Florida for four days. So I go down there, I'm taking a trip, I'm relaxing, I'm having a great time. My daughter calls me on the phone, super excited. Daddy, daddy, dad, she has, I'm not even gonna tell your age, but she's like, daddy, 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 guess what? And I'm like, what? She's like, I just got my period. And I'm like, oh, you didn't just tell me that. <laughs> Thank God I'm in Florida right now and you're with my mother. And I'm not like, we want to be there for their first steps. We want to be there for when they first talk for the first time. As a dad, a single dad, didn't want to be there for that first period to come. So <laughs> I was happy I was in Florida. But this is what dads go through. It's, it's the ups, the downs, the bumps, the grinds. And we do this and we do this with all our love all our soul because our kids mean everything to us. We will do anything for our children. And I'm so proud to be with you guys because like I said, we have some monumentous men on this panel right now and you're gonna hear some really good stuff. So men, if you don't mind, this is how it's gonna flow. I have a bunch of questions for you guys. Everyone on the panel does not have to answer the questions, but if you want to answer it, please feel free to. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just mute my phone. I should have did that before. That's my apologies to everyone. Let me just get that done real quick so my phone doesn't go off. Okay, so I have a bunch of questions for you guys. Anyone can answer these questions. So just jump in, raise your hand, unmute yourself, and tackle the question. So we want to get through, we really want to get through all these questions because we want it to be in a, this thing be an impactful call. All right. And we'll see how it flows. We have a little bit of a surprise later with more questions, but we'll see how our time is flowing. You guys okay with that? Let me just get a raise of hands. Yes, yes. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So like I said, I'm hot, I'm proud, I'm excited. Leland Jones, John Chase, Justin Harrison and Creighton Barrett, who's not on the call right now. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this. Um, take, thank you for taking the time to show what it's like and what it takes to be a strong father like you are. You know, like I said, you go through the bumps, you go through the, the celebrations, but it's not an easy job. We have a lot to do to raise our kids right. And that's all we wanna do are we want to raise our children to be the best that they can possibly be. And I'm just proud of you guys. So that's first what I want to say. I even see my guy Keith right here. I have to give a shout out to Keith McCoy, another dad who has birthed an army. So I'm just happy to see him on the call my also. So anybody who has more than three kids, I give props to. <laughs> More than three, you get super props, only have one. So let's start with the questions, guys. What does fatherhood mean to you? And like I said, just unmute yourself if you wanna tackle that question, but what does fatherhood mean to you? Yes, I got it. I'll, I'll go. Um, so fatherhood to me means protect, a protector, a provider, and um, someone that is always there uh, to support and lead. Uh, the ones that you have been entrusted with, right? The ones that you have um, 
I mean, I don't know how it's physically possible for Keith to birth those kids himself, but, but the, the kids that, that, uh, <clears throat> that I've been entrusted with, um, I had to add that in because I was, I was laughing when you said that. I was like, oh, yeah, like Arnold from that one show, right? He anyway. did birth the babies. <laughs> it was actually the beautiful Carrie McCoy, but, you know, she yeah, birthed yeah. That's right. But we got to give all the credit to it. them, man. Come on. But uh, <laughs> being a, a, a protector and a provider, um, and then that leader, that support system that your children truly do need, um, and uh, for me personally, I always have to make sure that I, I mean, this might be later in one of the, one of the questions, but I have to hug each one of my kids every single day to show them that, that I love them and that I care for them. Not just a, you know, from the side hug, you know, cause sometimes your teenagers don't really want to give you a full hug. You just force them to, you know, just give them a big full front hug. And uh, that is super important to me because that's what I always wanted as a child. And um, making sure that my children get, get that is one of the ways that represents my fatherhood for, for my kids. And then, of course, protecting them um, not only from like physical things, but spiritual things, you know, spiritual darts. Um, social darts there's a lot of things that you can't protect them with or, or protect them from but you can at least be that guide system so then they know how to handle themselves in those situations where they're attacked in all different ways physically mentally spiritually emotionally all of those all those things excuse me guys i've been under the weather man <clears throat> My throat no problem doing, doing, that's, doing amazing brother but uh so those are some of the, the, the ways. And then the fatherhood to me as well is, is constantly being that example of what I want to see them become, right? The type of character that I want them to become, I need to become, right? They can't become anything that, that I'm not being. So if, if I want them to be kind, loving, respectful, compassionate, strong, bold, brave, they need to see me be that too. I have to be strong, bold, brave. They can't see me cower down and give in to pressures that are not for my best. Um, they have to see me rise up as well. And when they do, which they have, I see in turn, I see them doing the same thing. And man, that, that brings me so much joy as a father. I love it. Awesome, awesome. That was beautiful, brother. Can you let yeah. everybody know how many kids you have, boys, girls, and ages? And yeah. Names? Yeah. So I got six daughters. Um, my oldest is seventeen. That's Alayla, and then I have Lavender. She's fifteen. Moira. She's thirteen. Clover. She's eleven. Uh, Sequoia. She's eight. And Ember, my little youngest, she's four. Wow. wow. Yeah. Beautiful names, incredible ages. And, and my, my wife, you got to give her all the credit for the names and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, beautiful names. And that's incredible. Yeah. And like I said, you know, you guys who really have done above and beyond with more than three kids, more power to you guys. More power. You guys are inspiration. You guys. Yeah, I'm sure other people are going to say the same thing. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, not easy. easy. It's not easy. Thank, thank you for that share, John. Uh, does yeah. anybody else, uh, Leland, Justin? Yeah, yeah if, I, if I could jump in. I mean, I, I agree, obviously, John, everything you said, I totally agree with. But what I was thinking is like, with, with my children, our biggest thing or my biggest thing is I want them to be respectful, responsible, and have a relationship with God. And so just like John was saying, like I've got to also demonstrate those same characteristics and I've got to be consistent. Otherwise, they're just words that I throw out there and my kids aren't going to ever take it serious. And so the other part of fatherhood is just being available. 
Like, I feel like, you know, whether that's a text message or if they just want me to watch them, you know, do something dumb on the, tra- not dumb, but you know what I mean? On the trampoline, it's usually dumb, right? Let's be yeah, honest. Kids do dumb stuff. It's, yeah, it's dumb. And so <laughs> like that kind of stuff, like what I try to like, I try to be conscious to be like, hey, I'm going to put my phone away. And like, this is me. Like I'm present, I'm available. And that's what I do. I watch them do dumb stuff on the trampoline or however, you know, however it goes. But yeah. I mean, not to get long-winded, but I echo the same thing that John shared. Awesome, Leland. Thank you, thank you. And once again, just like John did, can you let us know how many children you have, boys, yeah. girls, and ages and names? Yeah, so we're eight kids. So we have six girls as well, but two boys in the middle. So my oldest is fifth, yeah, 15, and it's Kennedy. Then Isabel, Phoenix, Xander are the boys. And then Ivy, Willow, Penelope, Skyler. And so Skyler is a three-year-old, just barely. So yeah, so that's uh, eight kids. And so, yeah, me, and what's funny is me and my wife never decided that we would have, like we thought we'd have a couple kids. Like that's it. I just think we're bad at math. I think that's our biggest problem. We're just bad at math. And I don't know how this ended up being so many kids in our home, but we love it. I really do. I love being a dad. Awesome, awesome. So the- I got to ask you guys, you guys have all these kids and they're all around close to the same ages. Yeah. Do you ever get called one kid by a different kid's name, child's name? All the time. Kid? All the time, huh? Yeah, every day. <laughs> all the time, like constantly. <laughs> that I stopped must using, be hilarious. I oh, stopped my. using names. We just numbered them. Just <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, at awesome. least I don't call them by the dog's name. At, at least I, I can keep that straight. If it That's is, good. I know That's I'm fun. doing all right. <laughs> I would just be like thing one, thing two, thing three, thing four. <laughs> That's about it. Keep it like that. All right, let's go to the next just, question, guys. Just so, you, just so you know, after five, it's all the same. This all. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So deep question, serious question. What do you guys feel? What is the state of fatherhood in America right now, 2021? What's the state of fatherhood in America? Well, I'd like to say a couple things Let me just before you get on that, John. Yeah, yeah. Keith, by all means, if you want to jump in on a question, please, by all means, do so, all right? Thank you. It's just not for the panelists, but Keith, if you have something to say, please do so. Go ahead, John. Sorry about that. Well, it's hard to tell because I don't think we're seeing the true nature of fatherhood. If we are, you know, if you're watching TV, if you're watching, you know, the regular programs and all that kind of stuff, the way they depict fathers, okay, they're losers. Literally, they depict fathers as as just lazy, uh, stupid, or ignorant. Um, And I feel like that's teaching uh, the next generation of fathers. It's teaching them a lot. Um, Geez, we're not going to be in a good state. But the way that it it really is, I think that there are some good fathers out there. I really do. And I think there are a lot of great examples out there. Um, it just depends where we look, you know? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. We just can't watch the media and the, the shows. And the, I mean, think of like the Homer Simpsons and the, the, all those cartoon dads that are just lame. You know, it's like, do you want to be that? No. Do I want one of my kids to grow up and marry something like that? No, mm. not at all. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else would like to chime in on that on the state of fatherhood in America right now? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you got it, Keith? Go, uh, go well, for I it. mean, I got thoughts, but I actually came here to listen to Leland because he is funny and I haven't seen Leland in a long time. <laughs> it's been too long. It has been too long, Keith. It has been too long. Um, <clears throat> it's tricky, man. The state of fatherhood, it, like I love what John said because it's portrayed very much through a lot of, we'll call it media, is, you know, fathers being absent, being, 
not intelligent. The other thing that I'm seeing, though, in a lot of stuff, especially on social media, if you watch any kind of TikTok reels or Instagram, and it's a lot of commentary on how dads aren't there and dads are gone or, you know, dads don't show up in the home and things like that. And I know, I mean, I'm looking at this panel of men that are sitting here and every one of us is super present in our kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of tricky because for me, the circle of people I'm around or that I engage with, they lift me up and encourage me to be more present for my kids. They encourage me to be a better dad. Like I look at them and I see them showing up and they encourage me. So it's tough because I don't watch a lot of the television stuff. So I, f I feel good about the state of like how men are starting. I shouldn't even say starting how men are showing up now. I just think we need to get more vocal about what it means to be vulnerable with our kids, accountable to our kids, you know, shifting those paradigms, generational healing, um, things like that. So I don't really know where the state of fatherhood is, but I feel really good about the people that I consider my brothers and I know that they encourage me and lift me up. And so that gives me hope more than anything. Right. Right. That's great. And, and what's what a tricky thing is, you can have a guy who's either separated or divorced from their partner and still super present in their kids' mm -hmm. lives. And you can have a guy who's in the home every day and disconnected from his kids. Yep, 100%. Like, yep. That can easily happen. And that's the worst thing that can a father can do is disconnect themselves from their children, even being present in the home. You know, you have some fathers who, you know, you're letting the television raise your kids, you're letting social media raise your kids, and you're just not doing your part. You're not doing, and that small part is being present, which is so key. Being present at every aspect. You can't be there for all things, but you can be present. And that daughter or son will know that. They know that they can always count on dad to be there. Leland, I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't know. Like, my answer to that question, short answer would be, I don't know. But if I look at all my neighbors and I look at the guys I interact with or, you know, I'm still friends with the, you know, the guys I went to school with. And I look at how they are interacting with their kids. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident in the state of fatherhood in America right now. But yeah, it's like what John was saying. And if you go off of the news, I don't, I don't know. You could be really misled in so many different directions. But yeah, the people I interact with, I know, they, I know they're just trying their best. And I think that is one of the key things to being a dad. Just try your best and it all works out typically. So that, yeah. that, was, my, that was my point of view. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. You got to do your best. Um, you got to put forth the effort, effort with your kids. Um, I'm going to add two seconds of something real quick. Absolutely, please. But by all means. I think the underlying message that I'm hearing there too is if what you're seeing isn't a good representation around you, check your circle. Like it might be time of fatherhood. And if you're trying to do something different and better, it might be time to take a good, long, hard look at your circle. Say that one more time because you cut out for a brief moment. Oh. So say that one more time if you don't mind. If you're not seeing the representation of fatherhood that, that you want or that you would hope to see, check your circle. So you need to actually look a little bit closer at who it is that you're interacting with. We, we've got a tight circle here and we're gonna to continue to grow in real and hope to continue to grow this message and this positive influence and people that are showing up and doing great things. But if that looks different and you're around people that, that aren't, it's gonna hold you back more than it's gonna help you. So be willing to, to check your circle. Yes, absolutely. And I love this. I love this because real is about being real. And we have such powerful men in real that, I mean, I, I, I bubble with joy when it comes to real, because if we can get even some young men on here who are not even fathers yet, and they hear this, you can, they can get a lot of takeaways, a lot of takeaways from this. Hearing from um, men who have been there, who have done it over and over and over again, some of us. Um, so really good takeaways. That's why Real is such a great platform. 
uh, for anybody to listen to, young, middle-aged, or old. So great platform to have. This is a deep question, guys. What does it mean to be a masculine man in your kid's life? whether you have a daughter or a son. Is that important to be a masculine man in your kid's life? Come on, John Chase. You're like the most masculine man of all of us. You gotta take that question. <laughs> I'm trying, my phone is dying and I cannot find a charger. Oh, um, you gotta get a charger, John. I just asked my kid, I just went inside and said, hey, somebody find me a charger. Um, yeah, I thought about that one a lot. And the thing is, is really the term masculine has been, has, is trying to be destroyed, right? Totally. Currently, I, I feel like, totally. I, I feel like there's a lot, again, if, it depends on what we're watching, right? What we're, what we're uh, allowing into our, our sphere, but uh, um, they want to demasculine men and the thing is is you need the masculine and the feminine everything works in harmony there's a yin and yang there's a there's balance right and um masculine to me is is again being that that brave that protecting um strong vulnerable right uh person that isn't willing to back down to, uh, to, uh, to any type of uh, fears that I have um, in the presence of my girls or just myself. Because uh, really, let's, let's really face it. Yes, this is all about fatherhood, but everything we do, we're, it's actually all up here. Everything's going on up in here. We're doing all of this. Um, for ourselves, because if it's not right up in here, then it's never going to be right out there for our kids, for 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 anything. Um, and uh, maybe I didn't say that right because it's not coming coming out as clear as I planned. I'm talking about this masculinity part, but masculine isn't just the the strong, ruthless, heartless. Um, it's not about that. It's not about who can lift the most and who's got the biggest thing. And, and it's not about being, you know, being the, the, the best at, at something or over someone else. Um, true masculinity is being strong in the face of your personal fears. And the thing is, is women can have masculinity in that way men can have femininity in that in, in that way because we need that balance we need we need to be able to show that kind side that that part that's the caring the nurturing side um and in the animal kingdom you still see it it's it's okay. it's all over in the animal kingdom there's a balance there's the there's the protector the strong you know uh part um and then there's the the caring part and uh and if that's how we want to explain masculine and feminine then there you go but uh there are masculine and feminine energies in everything and i think we need to to keep those here and i think we need to represent them mm -hmm. so good stuff john thank you for sharing that i, I agree 100 percent, john i think i think that's why we have to lead by example so you guys know we have nine sons and uh so we have a lot of testosterone in our house and mm -hmm. it, it creates a lot of uh, interesting experiences. And I have three brothers, so I never grew up with sisters, right? I didn't have any sisters and I don't have any daughters. I've never changed a girl diaper in my whole <laughs> life. Um, I'm told that it's a little different, um, but I've never <laughs> had that experience. And uh, being masculine in a household of boys has really been an interesting journey because we have to model the behavior we have to model behavior because what they're getting just like john said what they're getting from everywhere else is the opposite mm -hmm. right right it's the opposite so so we have to uh, we have to lead by example at every corner every turn
Absolutely, totally agree with that, Justin. And can you give everyone the pleasure of names and ages, please? <laughs> Take out your notebook. <laughs> you know, some, Take out your cheat sheet. So, so going back to when, when you said that, you know, do we ever get the names wrong? So my dad used to get our names wrong all the time. And there was only four of us. And I was like, how do you not, how do you mess this up? Right. And I used to think I will never do that to my children. <laughs> and, and now it's like, it's like so, so bad sometimes. And I know who I'm talking to, but I might say four or five names uh, before I get the right one. And it's, it's crazy. So uh, oh, this is Callan is 21. Blake is 19. Porter is 16. Brody is 14. There's 10. Plate is nine. Thane is seven. Pruitt is four. And the baby is Soren and he's two. How's that? Are you impressed? You did it. I'm impressed. <laughs> you did it, brother. I'm absolutely <laughs> impressed. Good stuff. Do you, know, do you know how I remember their birth years? It's my internet passcode. <laughs> It's my wi wow. it's, it's, it's my Wi-Fi passcode, so I have to memorize that, and then I have all their birth years down. Oh, that's incredible! Great stuff. Yeah. Great See, stuff. that that right there is fatherhood. <laughs> exactly. Remembering your kids' names and their yeah. Oh man. So that's my son, my oldest son. <clears throat> excuse me. My oldest son sent me this meme the other day, and I think it was a a little video clip from Les Mis. Um, and it has this older guy on there. And, and the meme was when asked about fatherhood and then the video shows this old guy and he gets this face. I, I should post it in here for obviously super funny. He gets this old he's face and he says, terrible, great. <laughs> and it, it's, it's hilarious. And that does. I mean, fatherhood sometimes is terrible, but it's always great. Absolutely. Yeah, it's always great and always worth it. Absolutely. Thank you, Brother Just. Uh, Creighton has finally joined us, finally made it in, late and tardy, but he's here and present. So that's <laughs> all that matters, you know. But hey, that's how he does. <laughs> but it's good to have Creighton here with us. So the next question is a, another deep one that I want you guys to think about. What do you feel gives fathers the strength to change? On, or improve on negative generational habits or less than ideal examples of fatherhood? Anybody, unmute yourself, please. And if you want me to read the question again, I'll be happy to do so. Read, read it again, because I know I got stuff to say about this. Okay, so what do you feel gives fathers the strength to change or improve on negative generational habits or less than ideal examples of fatherhood. Okay, I know there's a couple of us on the call that, uh, that definitely um, didn't have the, the best upbringing and didn't have the examples that, that we could have had. So, and I'm definitely one of those. Um, in fact, Sorry, I'm sitting outside and this big old truck keeps driving by. Um, my father, I mean, he, uh, he never said I love you. He never gave hugs. Um, he was one of those that, like, if he was home, you didn't know he was home. He was definitely not present. He was locked away in his room. Um, he was addicted to porn. He was, I mean, like, he was sleeping around with tons of women. I mean, he was, like, always self-indulgent, okay? So when I got married and it was really frightening um, when, my, when my wife said she was pregnant. I mean, I was excited, right? But then at the same time, I'm like, like all, this, all these fears of like, well, what kind of father am I gonna be? Like, who, how, like I didn't know, I didn't know what, what would become of it because I couldn't draw upon anything. Um, any type of good example that he was. But I knew what I didn't want to be. So I could draw on the negative things, right, that he did, and then do the opposite. So that was a main driver, a main 
um, reason for me to, to change, right? I didn't want to have what he had. I didn't want to have, I mean, he had 10 kids. So, I mean, I, I had six, but, but I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be the character that he, he was. So I was going to do everything I could to be the opposite. I'd watch different things. I'd hang out with different people. I wouldn't do the, 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 you know, I wouldn't have the addictions that he had. I was going to change everything. And it was hard. It was really tough because that kind of stuff is ingrained into you. And his father was the same way. So if you're talking generational type stuff, then, I mean, I had it down that line um, pretty strong. And so do my other brothers. We've all struggled um, in the beginnings of our, uh, our fatherhood. Um, and it's been, it's been hard to, to really live up to what, to what we didn't, we don't know what we're living up to. Right. We mm -hmm. kind of had to make that up. Um, so, so for me, the, the main driver was what not to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and wow, it, it did work out. Now I did, my, my dad passed away two years ago, almost this uh, last, uh, or next, next month, 4th of July. And we did resolve a lot of stuff about eight years ago. And, uh, he started coming back into the family and, I honestly felt like a, for the first time, probably about four years ago, for the first time, I could actually call him father mm. instead of just, you know, the guy, the guy that, you know, got my mom pregnant. And uh, I, I was actually able to have a relationship with him. So, um, and maybe he took example from, from me. I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of great conversations in his last few years. But uh, yeah, that's my two cents on that one. Thank you. That's powerful. And you know, I want to thank you for being the man that you are, because a lot of men follow the footsteps of what they know, what they've seen, what they know from a childhood. They pass it on to their kids, and it takes a strong man to do the opposite. So yeah. for the strong men who have done the opposite of what their fathers have done if it was in a negative way, whether it was drinking, cheating, mm -hmm. whatever the case might be, you say, thank you, dad. I wanna thank you because I wanna thank you for who you are because it made me the man who I am today. Yeah. It made me the strong man that I am today. So I wanna thank you. So um, little tip, thank you for sharing that. Um, like I said, a lot of men fall prey to just passing that down to their kids. So. It mm -hmm. takes a real strong father to do the opposite. So I'm proud of you, John. We're all proud Thank of you. Does Thanks. anybody else want to touch on that? Um, yeah, I, I'm, my background similar to John's, uh, you know, different addiction, different challenges, but similar in, in a lot of ways. For me, not everybody's going to be able to do what I did, but marry the right woman. Uh, like... I could not be who I am or where I'm at if it wasn't for my wife first. Um, and then, you know, like, like John used who his dad was and, and what his dad did to fuel him and what not to do. And that was my intention as well. What I learned though, is that, and there's actually studies that'll support this, that a lot of people grow up with, I don't want to be like my parents. I don't want to do what my parents did. And they end up repeating that cycle because the reality is unless you go develop skills and tools to not do what they did, it's all, you know, cause that's the behavior that's been modeled for you. And so if you don't take that really vulnerable step and say, I am unskilled in this area and go get help, whether that's therapy, coaching, personal development, you know, mentors. I mean, it's a huge part of the reason why I want to be a part of this group is because the opportunity that we all have to model behavior for other men, to teach other men how they can behave differently and develop different skill sets. That's a ripple effect I want to be a part of. And so I would just say like, if you have an area that you don't want to repeat the, the actions of other parents or even, you know, the generational stuff, it's great to want that. 
it's more important to act on it and go find people who are modeling the behavior you want. Because otherwise, if you don't have the tools, man, you just repeat those steps. And I did that. I mean, I almost imploded my marriage until I was able to go, I don't want this, but I don't know any different. I don't know how to do anything different. So I was real lucky that my wife stuck by me while I tried to figure all that out because not a lot of women would have. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll just add that to, to the conversation. Awesome. Thank you for that. And of course, Keith, you know, at Father Day, Father's Day week, please run down those names and ages, please. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <clears throat> so Riley's 23. Reagan is 21. Ryder is 14 next week. Render is 12. Remedy is 10. River is 7. Reese is 5. And Rhythm is 3. I do not remember their names all the time. They, they, uh, many of them go by, hey, you. Or, or <laughs> hey, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Um, that works often. Uh, we have six girls and two boys. So, and that you have to guess which are which. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's probably, if I had nine kids, that's probably the route I would have taken. Just name all the kids with the first letter of the, the same first letter. All of that's them. That's it. R's R1, down the line. That's it. My what wife and I text R-S-A. It's, it gets yep. confusing. <laughs> no. One of the R's. Come here. One of the R's. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. How has community made a difference for you in fatherhood? Craig, why don't you tackle that one? Hey, everybody. How you doing? Sorry for the uh, tardiness today, but doing the fatherly duty on the baseball uh, field this afternoon, this evening. Uh, As we speak of community, um, I'm in the village of New York. uh, And community, As I'm, I'm a big sports guy. So the sports community, for the, for the most part, for all four of my children, has been the community that I've looked to and has helped me out uh, in raising my four children through sports and have been very supportive in helping us get, you know, between um, the logistics of getting, you know, various kids to games and things of that nature. But of course, you know, uh, with your children being as important, as, you know, to you as they are, you want to make sure that the people that are in the community, that, they tr- that you tr- trust them. And that they have a value, a value system that is uh, similar to yours. So um, community has been very, very important, you know, over the years. Uh, my children, my oldest is 33 and my youngest is five. So, I mean, go figure. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually dealing in two different um, generations, you know, because my, my, my first set of children, 33, 25 and 23, now I'm dealing with a younger bunch of parents that I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm now the older parent in this particular group. And we're pretty much cultivating the community, you know, with my younger son at this particular time. But uh, once again, it's about the value system. It's about, you know, um, I mean, faith-based and it's just about love and, and trust. So uh, that's what's helped me out over the years. And um, once again, I'm gonna apologize for being a little tardy, but um, I, I'm just so happy to be on here, you know, with fathers, you know, when we're looking forward to Father's Day, and um, this is definitely a strong group, and I, I thank you guys. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Craig. Appreciate your feedback and tapping in, for sure. What are the names of the kids? <laughs> Michael, Taylor, Sydney, and Bronson. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, anybody else want to tackle that question? Yeah, I'd love How has community made a difference for you and fatherhood? Yeah, I'll say a couple things if that's cool. Go ahead, Brother Lee. So I, I used to make a joke and the joke kind of went along the lines of, I'm gonna make sure I raise my kids that they'll be the bad example. That way you don't have to worry about them, right? So that's kind of funny in the sense of, you can send your kids off to school and you're like, well, they're the bad example. I don't need to worry about anyone influencing them. But the truth is like the community you're around, that's what's going to shape so much of your kids' behavior, their choices. And so I always look at it like as a personal responsibility to make sure that I'm a good, I'm a good person in the community to try to hope, you know, that whole, you know, the rising tide raises all ships that I'm hoping that's what it does. It raises all the ships around us because yeah, your kids, they go to school and they make friends or just, I mean, anything, the neighbors. Also, it's like you go to the, you go to the, you go to the gas station and one of your kids needs to go to the bathroom. You want to be able to just send them in and go to the bathroom without having to worry. 
Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not to that point yet. I still like follow them into the bathroom. Right. But you want that community to be such a wholesome place that you can do such a thing. And the other thing is like, we have, we have like splash pads and stuff and it's summertime. So we've been going to them. Like you sit there and you can kind of see this difference in parenting tactics. You see some dads, they're in the water. Like they're in the water, they're holding their kids up, they're dumping the buckets on them, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you see the other people that are, you know, they're in their car or they're sitting far away and then they just yell when something's the problem. So I think part of the community for me is I'm watching and I'm like, yeah, I want to be more like this guy. I want to be more like that guy. And then I try to slowly change my behavior to become a, a better father. Well, at least I, at least I hope I'm becoming better at it. Awesome. Uh, and yes, you are, brother. Yes, you, you're an amazing dad. So thank, thank you for that share. Thank you for that. Share. We can do this all night. So I'm going to kind of jump around with the questions. I'm not going to bullet each one. We don't want to be here until 10 o'clock. So let me ask you guys, what role has mental wellness played in fatherhood for you? Mental wellness. What role has that played in fatherhood for you? Anybody can jump in and tackle that. A huge role. That is a huge role. Um, when I was 19, I was diagnosed with clinical depression and borderline personality disorder, uh, um, uh, anxiety disorder, ODD. I had a whole bunch of things that they labeled me as. And uh, I was supposed to be on a bunch of different drugs and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, the If I hadn't figured out a way to take care of my, my mental faculties. Um, I, there's no way I could be the father that I am. I, I would have more likely ended up like my dad, but I did seek out the therapists and I did seek out the mentors and I did read tons of books and I went and did schooling and I, 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 filled it with other things and started practicing all of those and saying things to myself in the mirror and really trying to become who I wanted to become so then I could get this right. Yeah. And when this got right, um, I feel like I can handle the stuff so much easier because kids are going to fight. Um, fatherhood is stressful. Protecting your, your kids is stressful. Providing for them financially is stressful and uh you know we're not we're not all uh i mean most of us here are are entrepreneurs and, and everything and um but i didn't start out that way and uh i didn't start out with anything and if i wasn't strong up here there's no way i could have would have could have made it through as a good father mm. um so it, it plays a huge role wow powerful brother powerful and, you know, mental awareness is everything, man. I mean, if our mental capabilities aren't on point, you know, we have to seek help if they're not. You know, we have to do whatever it takes to get on an even keel with ourselves so we can be on an even keel with our partners and our children. But it starts with us first. We have to get us right first. And then we can, like they always say in the airplane, Put the mask on yourself, on your self first, and then on your kids or your spouse or whoever you're with. But you have to take care of yourself first. So, very powerful. Anybody else want to touch on mental mental wellness? I got a few comments on that. Um, so I got a few teenagers right now, and I feel like these guys are in just a mental health crisis, and it is scary. Uh, this for me, the mental wellness area. No, we focused on all five peaks, right? But for me, it was easier for the physical. It was easier for emotional. Like there's been some other things where I just naturally had some more tools in my toolbox. Mental wellness was one that I had to consciously work on. But the dividends that have come from consciously working on that, I'm seeing, I'm seeing it in my teens. I'm seeing them almost be like little mini sounding boards and little mini therapists for their friends. And like, it feels so good to know that their friends feel like our home, their relationship with them is a safe space that they can talk and work through some of these things because too many of them are medicated and numb and different things where they're 
they're learning more and more not to trust their own intuition and who these young adults are developing into. And I feel like one of the biggest gifts that we can give these kids is just to run, you know, as fast as they can in the direction that they feel inspired to do so. So supporting that, um, supporting their divine purpose, like mental wellness has played a huge role in that. So we just continue to pour into it. It feels like for me, it's worth the time to continue to learn uh, tools in that arena, but also to, to show up for my kids. So they see my wife and I working on things there. We openly apologize often and talk to them about our imperfections and the things that we are still working on and working through. But we hope that the common denominator there is they see our stick to they see our integrity, they see what we stand for, like Creighton mentioned, right? They see the values and they see what we're not willing to budge on, that even if we don't know yet, we're willing to stick and figure it out um, and that we're here with them like to figure it out. So I hope that that resonates because I see the world right now generating a lot of struggling soft teenagers that are gonna get to an area where life's gonna shake them. We know stuff's gonna happen. It happens to us in adulthood, like it's gonna rock them and it's just gonna sink their ship immediately like that first major thing. And we don't want that to be them. We want them to be strong in their marriages, strong in their friendships. Um, so building that mental fortitude I think it's critical. And I think if we miss that piece as parents, it's, it's a big one. I think we're going to be paying for it later on. We're going to be helping them support their kids and, and doing different things, right? It's going to come back. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Wow, powerful, brother. Thank you for that, John. Yep. Um, you hope you guys don't mind. We'll probably take this to about 9.15 uh, before I let you men go. So I'm going to direct the question to certain individuals at this point in time, Justin. Harrison, if you can unmute yourself, this is going to be for you, brother. I'm here, buddy. Okay, so question for you, Justin, with your <clears throat> nine kids. What are the best ways you have learned or observed healthy communication with your spouse and your kids? <laughs> well, you just have to have that little crystal ball that tells you everything that your kids are thinking and what your wife is thinking. So you just always know. <laughs> you just know. You, guys, you, you just, you guys don't have that? <laughs> <laughs> you might be uh, the only well, person you, with a crystal ball. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm totally kidding, of course. I, I, none of us have that. And that's what makes it so exciting, right? Um, goodness. So the biggest thing to me that I've learned through a lot of um, experiences is uh, that unclear communication is unkind. Oh. And oh. it's really easy to have unclear communication because we think something and we say something and sometimes they're not the same thing. And uh, especially when we're talking with our wives, right? It's, it's, Lots of experience in this department, right? Where ideas have been, I thought shared clearly, but we're not clear, right? And and to ha to go back and come back full circle, uh, to make sure that it was clear and that we're on the same page and save you know potential heartache from happening uh, is super super critical. And so it's just being open in conversation. We've been super blessed to have uh, like our teenagers. Like I meet parents all the time that say. Well, my 17 year old won't even speak to me. You know, my 16 year old doesn't speak to me. We've been super blessed to have all of our kids um, won't stop speaking to us. <laughs> and so, um, and it's a huge blessing because they tell us everything that's going on in their lives. And that's um, really important because it allows us to counsel and be present with them. Right. But I think that they're modeling that behavior because we model that behavior with them. Mm -hmm. right we're open with them we we talk to them about everything and um and then they talk back and so it's been a beautiful thing but mm -hmm. it is we we have to communicate guys when when there is no communication okay let me just give you this little factoid and this isn't life in general with anybody when there is no communication the human mind always turns negative they will think something's wrong even though there might not be anything wrong at all right everything could be wonderful but if there's no communication, they will think something's wrong, right? They will think, they will think, they will find a negative twist. It's just what our brains do. It's how we're wired. So, so therefore we have to have communication. 
so that people don't go into that space. So our kids and our wives don't go into that space. Awesome. That was perfect. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that, Justin. Thank Thanks, you buddy. so much. Thank you. Keith, this is for you, brother. Yes, sir. How has your health impacted the way you're able to show up as a father? Oh, <clears throat> um, I think it's, I think it carries an impact for sure. Um, I mean, you know, for those of you that know me, like uh, three or four years ago, I had an extra 30, 40 pounds on me and I made a commitment to lose that weight and to get physically fit because I wanted to be able to chase my kids and play with them and see them grow up. Right. Um, so I think the physical health definitely has, has an impact, um, and I've got, you know, I've got competitive soccer players in my house. I've got rock climbers in my house. And if you want to be present for them, which I think all of us do, and we're kind of, and if, if you're not currently present and you're learning, it, it's important. Um, you got to be able to roll with them. You got to be able to hang and, and take them out and do the things, you know, that they're doing. And if you're not physically healthy, then, then you're not able to be as present as you could be with them. So for me, it's, 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 it's become a motivator and actually like to circle back to the mental health question, if I'm not, if I don't get to the gym, if I don't stay physically active, that impacts my mental health. And like the quickness that my temper shows up is it, it, it's a lot faster. So, you know, I'm grateful for things like essential oils to help modulate that, but staying fit is also a really great way to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Creighton, can you tackle that question also? You mute it. You mute it. There okay, you go. here I go. Here I go. Hey, guys. Well, once again, I mean, kids uh, and young adults and, and, and families, they mirror, you know, us. I mean, as fathers, I mean, if you, I mean, I don't want to sound male chauvinistic, you know, head of the house and things of that nature. But, you know, once again, the, the children will model you know, what their dad is like. And for me, you know, I've fluctuated, you know, between having weight, not being in shape, and then, you know, times where I'm in very good shape. So I've gone in and out of it. But what I can honestly say is that, you know, like the, uh, the gentleman said, you know, being able to get out there and throw a baseball, being able to shoot hoop, you know, being able to give the kids able to see me having fun playing sports, not out there just being the guy pushing them off to some other young guy to teach them how to be a competitor. You know, it gives me a great feeling and it gives them a great feeling to see their dad out there coaching. So uh, for me, you know, wellness and feeling good has been, you know, pretty much paramount to me. And it's kept me young. You know, I won't say how old I am, but I don't feel the age that I am, you know. So and when I'm out there, a lot of the younger parents, you know, I see this young guy, you know, looking like Kyle, you know, and I, and I go there and say, hey, listen, I can run. You know, like I say to Kai all the time, you may have all those muscles and you look good, but I'm still, I still can run with you. So, I, <laughs> so I'm having fun, you know, once again, I just have fun, stay, stay healthy. And if I stay healthy, my kid has seen me moving since he was been born, all my kids, and they, they're living a healthy lifestyle. They're, they're living the sporting life and it translates into their work. You know, I mean, they're all not just in, into sports, you know, they, they go to the gym, you know, they go to work and they live healthy. And I'm, I'm looking forward to them having healthy grandchildren for me. So I'm looking generations down. What I do, you know, I, I, I feel that I, you, you, you sow, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I know John Chase did agree with me also is that, you know, staying healthy is so vital and important, especially when you're raising kids, man, they really need to see you as the, as the example, eating healthy, staying healthy, being active, um, it's unfortunate that if you see an obese kid, all you have to do is look up and see their parents. And you're like, I get it. Now I wonder why, now I see why this kid is obese. Look at the parents. So they really model the parent. If you're eating unhealthy, being lazy, not working out, not taking care of your body, the kids are going to model that. They'll do the same thing. So, um, Thank you, Creighton, for that. Thank you, Keith, for that share. It's very important to be the, that example that you want your kids to be and want them to see. I'm gonna have one more question for you guys before I go into one last bonus question, all right? 
anyone can unmute themselves and answer this. How, but how has your own financial journey impacted how you guide your kids as they grow? Ooh, can I say something real quick? Yes, you can, Jeff. Um, so I don't know if any of you grew up hearing this, but I grew up hearing all the time, we can't afford it, right? We can't afford it, we can't afford it. Or one of my mother's favorites was, money doesn't grow on trees, <laughs> right? Um, and so that was, um, or we're broke, right? We're broke, we're broke, we're broke, we're broke. And I heard this all the time, almost every day. And so, of course, you start to believe what you repeat, what you hear repetitively, right? And, uh, and so when I left to home to go to school, uh, my mentality was exactly that. Can't afford it, everything's too expensive, we're broke. And it wasn't until my mind was open to the amazing profession that I participate in that I discovered that I was deep in the heart of poverty consciousness and mm. poverty mindset. Oh. And, I, and I didn't know any better. And I'm sure my parents didn't know any better. And, and probably their parents didn't know any better, right? And it was just a, a generational thing. And to be able to break that cycle now for my own children, um, you know, my, my children don't hear those words. Okay. doesn't mean we give them everything. We do not. Uh, we do not. In fact, they probably sometimes think we're far more restrictive than their friends' parents, right? Uh, but we're not telling them that we can't afford it or that we're broke. But we're saying things like, well, that's, that's not what we choose to do with our money, right? That's not what we're choosing to do. We're, cho we're choosing to make this choice, and this is why, right? So to break that cycle of poverty consciousness and really instill the seed of entrepreneurship inside each one of them, uh, it's going to lead to great things in the future. So um, I got to have, you know, I got to have somebody take care of me when I'm old. So they got to do some amazing, th some amazing things. Awesome. Awesome. I love that, Justin. Thank you for that. I, I got to jump in. I got to oh, jump please. in. Because jump in great. Please. Just, recently, yeah, just, just recently, my five-year-old, you know, jumped in and said, Dad, you know, um, you know, he's talking about business. What kind of business do I want to start at five years old? So just to speak, I grew up also with the poverty consciousness, you know, with, you know, we can't afford this. You know, I grew up in a housing project in New York. And just to have, you know, be able to provide you know, for my children in general, but, you know, just to see my youngest son at five years old, my, my other children, they speak about it now, but they're older, but to hear a five-year-old say, you know, what business we're going to start because he's mirroring what he hears from myself, his mom, and so on and so forth. Oh, what a feeling. So uh, that's how I've impacted, you know, I see, you know, my older children, they, they're entrepreneurial in spirit, they're doing things entrepreneurially, but to see it go all the way down to my youngest, oh, what a feeling. So oh, thank you for sharing that's beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And this is our bonus. And we actually posed this question on real, and it was all to the real members. And we got a lot of feedback on this question. I'm going to read you some of the responses from that question after. Uh, feel free to chime in on your own thoughts regarding that question. All right, guys. All right. So the question was, what do you feel are some of the most difficult have to look in the mirror aspects of fatherhood? And this, this is some of the feedback that we got back from our real brothers. Staying positive and to be a meaningful and positive influence in my children's daily life. Trying to be the protector we all think of ourselves as, but knowing technology has opened up your own youth to a whole new level of predator. When you see your child hurting and you just can't quite do anything about it, you never ever wanna see your child hurting physically or emotionally. And a feeling of helplessness just comes over you. Words, the things we say in reaction, rather than making sure we take the time to respond in a more kind fashion. One of the hardest is letting go and letting, letting them make mistakes. We have four adult children and four under, age, four under age children. It's tough to watch them have to grow in wisdom on their own path. The hardest is letting them make mistakes knowing 
that they need to learn the lesson that is going to teach them. I think finding that balance between letting them struggle a little and removing obstacles is my own personal look in the mirror. And I say, you did a good job. So that's some of the feedback that we got from the Real Brothers. And I'll read the question one more time to you gentlemen and whoever's gonna be listening. What do you feel are some of the most difficult have to look in the mirror aspects of fatherhood? Unmute yourself. This is for anyone who's on right now. I, I can jump in here first if you're okay. Absolutely, brother. So, I mean, that list you shared, I mean, all of those are spot on. Like, I don't even know which one would be number one or number two. Like, they're all obvious pain, pain points for us. Um, another thing, like, as a dad looking in the mirror that can be painful is, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, it's like we set out and we said we were going to change certain patterns that our parents did, and yet you find yourself getting caught up in it. And it's like you look in the mirror and you're like, you feel like swearing about it, right? Because you didn't make that change. So that's been hard for me. Sorry, I got somebody knocking at the door right now. I got one of my kids out the door. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's my point. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? I think the simple aspect, the real aspect of sometimes physically looking in the mirror. If you're working on a health goal specifically or a place that you want to be and you are telling your kids these things and you know that you're not where you want to be yet, right? And you're still working on it, work in progress is giving yourself that grace, giving yourself that latitude to know and love yourself where you are. Like you're already perfect now, where you're at is already perfect. Just because you can improve on it doesn't mean that where you're at now isn't already perfect, right? There just means there's something even better that you're going to continue to evolve into. So the, the physical, the literal aspect of looking in the mirror sometimes, the not judging ourselves too harshly as men. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Brother John. Anybody else would like to touch on that? I think we're good. I think we're good. I think, I think we did it, gentlemen. So first, I want to say, I want to thank, thank each and every one of you for being a part of this incredible, amazing Zoom tonight for Father's Day. And it's really fall this week. Let's call it fall this week. This is our week. So we so let's salute ourselves. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Let's brush our shoulders off because we've done a heck of a job and the job never ends. We continue to do the job. We put in the work. We be the best leaders that we can be. We be the best heroes, the best protectors, the best visionaries, the best leaders, and hopefully the best oilers to our children that we can possibly be. And I know each and every father that's on here now and watching this, you're doing an incredible job. Celebrate yourself. Take the time to acknowledge what you've done as a father and how far you've grown and how you've become the man that you want to be and you continue to grow in the eyes of your partner and in the eyes of your children. So salute yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. You're doing an amazing job as a dad. Trust me. You're doing an incredible job. Continue to do that job. Take Father's Day. Do whatever you want on Sunday. Fish. Relax. Sleep all day if you want. Maybe if you have nine kids, you can't sleep all day. But if you can't sleep all day, sleep all day. But do what you want. Take the time for yourself and celebrate yourself and enjoy your kids. Enjoy your family. I want to push it back to our incredible, incredible leader of real. John Bush, why don't you take us out and end us? Thank you, Kai. I'm sitting here in just incredible gratitude for you men and uh, to give you guys a little bit more of the magnitude of the messages that you just shared and who will hear them until we do our next fatherhood event next June 2022. There will be thousands of men that will hear these messages. Thousands, guys. This, is, this movement is beginning, but it is quickly getting national 
then international, there will be thousands of men that will take, you know, maybe a nugget or parts of this. Um, so thank you. Thank you for stepping up, showing up, sharing your messages. This will get uh, chopped up audio into the podcast. We'll, we'll have ways to get this out and help people get the message that they need here to stay inspired and to keep showing up in fatherhood. So thank you. If you are already part of our real journey and inside the Facebook group, um, or if you're one step farther and with us in our real community on Mighty Networks, love to have you. Realman.com if you want to check out a little bit more and learn about what we're doing to grow this movement of brotherhood. Um, and I'll just put a quick plug in for our special event next month in July, will be July 22nd. That's going to be a freedom focused event, specific, specifically about financial freedom. We're going to have some powerful things that we're going to cover getting into financial freedom, right, as we're in the month of freedom celebrating 4th of July and independence. So we're going to talk about financial independence and freedom next month. Tune into that. We know that that matters and that is super important. A lot of people stress on that one. Um, thank you guys. Thank you, gentlemen. And I appreciate you dedicating this time showing up. Be well, be real. Thanks, John. Be real, gentlemen. Be real. Happy Father's Day.